Welcome to the Drunk Guys Book Club, where books aren't just for school, where book clubs aren't just for women, and all our pictures are of beer. I'm Mike. I'm Nate. I'm Jimmy. And we are the Drunk Guys, and today we are finishing our roundup of the Booker shortlist for 2022 with what the, fuck is, oh, the Seven Moons of Molly Almeida by Shahan Karunatilaka. That's, I'm, I tried really hard. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> and someone starting with a beer. This is a beer called Bamboo Torture by Nightmare Brewing, because this book is about the Sri Lankan Civil War, and it's brutal. And I'm sure there was a good amount of bamboo torture going on on is both sides. Bamboo on Sri Lanka? It's tropical. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> They could they could raise pandas if they wanted to. Oh, sure. Bam, anyway. bamboo because there's ghosts that say boo and they hit people. And they go bam. That's that. <laughs> both of those things happen in the book. That's what I was thinking. This is a uh, <laughs> this is a triple IPA with bamboo oh. shoots, toasted oh. rice, and dry hopped with ginseng. <laughs> uh, really leaning Akoa, into the Asian shit there. Akoya and dragon hops, and it is nine point six percent alcohol. Don't get it under your fingernails. <laughs> oh, it stings. No, it's uh, very nice. Anyway, it's good. Yeah, it's good beer. So this book is only, I believe, the second novel of this author. And it, it's interesting. It came out in 2020 under a different title. And then was like, re, I don't know if he did much editing to it. But he has a book from 2020 called Chats with the Dead. And it's clearly the same book. Hmm. It's, I mean, unless he has... A different book narrated by a gay ghost set during the 1980s Sri Lankan Civil War. I mean, I mean there had maybe to be he has more a than thing one based on. Maybe it's from the perspective of Dee Dee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Instead of Molly. I mean, it is. Um, I mean, this is definitely the top three uh, books narrated by a gay ghost, but in the second person about the Sri Lankan Civil War. Top three easily uh, of the ones I've read. Oh, yeah. That's a given. The other one is the other one of this. <laughs> his third, you know, and I shouldn't really feel too bad for saying his name. Do you know what his first novel is called? Chinaman. Oh, I'm okay. sure he didn't. I'm sure it means something different, but maybe, maybe. But that's also set in Sri Lanka after the World Cup and during the Civil War. Like he just like finds. I think he must have like a word generator. Like, how about a a thing with gnomes? <laughs> who plays Scrabble during the Sri Lankan Civil War? <laughs> and then yeah, for one my, of the things isn't random. He's yeah, what, what is that's that's the glue of everything. <laughs> this book is set during a cooking competition for kosher vegans in the Sri Lankan Civil War. <laughs> Probably, yeah. He has a ty- has a, th- a type, but the book is uh, spoilers very good. So it's starts- some do boy wizards. <laughs> Some do Sri Lankan Civil War. This is my book about a boy wizard going to wizarding school during the Sri Lankan <laughs> Civil War. Uh, that's gonna it's gonna be a hard year at school. The great wizard Voldemort is, <laughs> go, is the, massacring the people. Castle ghosts are a little bit more s- serious. <laughs> so the movie, uh, the movie, the book starts, and the main character is dead, but he doesn't know it quite yet. He's like a ghost. And he's like, am I fucking high? <laughs> That's like his first thought. Like, I'm fucking <laughs> high. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he uh, actually, it doesn't quite start with that. It's like the very first line is... In the beginning. It is not his first line. He says, oh, no, you wake up and answer the question. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, he is kind of thinking, am I high? But then he <laughs> says, if I had a business card, it would say, Molly Almeida, photographer, gambler, Slut. <laughs> if I had a gravestone, it would say Melinda Albert Cabalana, 1955 to 1990, which is foreshadowing because immediately he's dead, <laughs> like in a couple paragraphs. And he's like, what is going on here? And I don't really get it. And he kind of like wakes up and he has a, he still has his camera around his neck and he's in what seems to be like an office building. And he's really not sure. Oh, yeah, he does talk about it's drugs. It's the, af- the afterlife as envisioned by Kafka. That's <laughs> when he wakes he's, up. And like, he's, at, he's at the Purgatory DMV. I mean, the book is really just um, Sri Lanka in the Bardo. <laughs> it's really <laughs> a big part of the book, so. Kind of. Actually, yeah, that is, <laughs> that is pretty, pretty true. I mean, it is, 
you know, it is a lot like that. And, you know, because <laughs> of all this shit, you know, it's all about the weird, weird version they have of the hereafter. Oh, yeah. That's true. This is from Threes, and it's called Hereafter, and it's an Oktoberfest lager. So you have to yell when you say it. Five and a half percent, so it's not worth my time. You drink gallons of it. This is a beer flavored beer, yeah. <laughs> You see, uh, I don't know if it was a positive um, take on our podcast or not, but somebody tweeted at us saying, like, I came back from work and I, I listened to the, I listened to like every other podcast talk about Lord of the Flies. And okay. then I listened to this one and uh, they have my boss walks into the room when they say, this tastes like the Pillsbury Doughboy smegma. And <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like you can't confuse this with other podcasts <laughs> Take Are that, uh, Leaf. Check out where the fuck was that other book called? I'm so sorry Overdue. I said that. It was neat. <laughs> neat. I don't know why you say these things. They're upsetting. There, there are children around often. I mean, <laughs> some things just taste like the Pillar Doy Hoy Smegma. This, this one, one, so this one just tastes like. Uh, have you ever had an Oktoberfest style beer? Yes, they all it are the like same that. Thing. It's good. You know, it's fine. Much like being dead. So, Molly, whose name is. Melinda, but is a man. It's Bill Gates' wife. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is a man, and that confused me for at least the first, like, 10% of the book, but... Yeah. No, then you find out for sure. Um, anyway, so he's, like, in this weird kind of office thing, but everything's kind of white, and people in line with him are literally, like, have, like, half their skulls missing and are, like, what? Everyone is, like, what is going on? It's like and the way someone just ask him, ask him his name... Name, religion, cause of death, don't remember. Time since death, don't know. And that's just what he says. And then it's kind of clear that he's, it's not heaven for sure. It's not definitely the Christian idea of heaven. It's just sort of like, it's like, yeah, purgatory, if purgatory was the DMV, is kind of what it was. And then you, and then the person tells him, who ends up being kind of a person, important person, the book says, oh, you have seven moons. And he's like, what does that mean? It means you have seven days, seven nights to actually figure out what the fuck is going on and tie up loose ends. Because they, they measure time like hotels, <laughs> like for, for like resorts. Well, it's uh, six days, but seven nights. <laughs> they just want to make sure you don't fuck it up because of a time zone thing. Oh, because but in a different time zone, like the moon is not necessarily there. <laughs> So you have, a, and, and according to this book, you have seven moons until you enter the light. And he asks, "Well, you what's have seven the moons light before you ca- before you can no longer enter the light? You have to enter the light before then on your own choosing." Right. And he says, "What's the light?" And he says, "The short answer is whatever you need it to be." No, this is the response. What, uh, the short answer is whatever you need it to be. The long answer is I don't have time for the long answer. So it's clearly, although there's definitely some like reincarnation going on. So it, it is, I guess you could you could say kind of Buddhist, but it's also like, hey, whatever you're, whatever you want. But they're also like dead atheists, just like wandering forever because they don't have anywhere to go. It's like catch all new age. Yeah. And it's just one one of the ways that this book, even though it's about the total, the awful brutality of this Sri Lankan civil war has kind of a light tone to it. Kind of a funny yeah. way about it, even though, and then it'll just be, and then after some, like, kind of a little bit silly stuff to hit you with a paragraph of, you know, you know, I photographed an eight-year-old holding his dead sister and stuff like that, and that's pretty tough. So you find out that in his life, he was a photographer, um, like, in the, in the war in for various news outlets, he would sell pictures to them. And he kind of had this goal or project of documenting shit of like the most egregious things, including this 1983 massacre of, now I forget which way all the massacring went, um, but it was so. There was plenty to go around. There was plenty to go around, but I actually don't know too much about the Sri Lankan civil war. Except that we read a book about it last year, and that's when I knew that it existed. <laughs> that's when I knew there <laughs> Pretty much, was yeah. a civil war. Which I don't remember know. anything about that book. But I know it has something to do with like, persecution against the Tamils. 
And then there are various other groups, like including the Tamil Tigers, who are kind of like... I highlighted that. Freedom. There was a passage where like, here's the shorthand. Yeah, and he's like, listen, pe- people, I made a cheat sheet for, uh, for Europeans. Here's what it is. It's not that complicated. The LTTE are the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elon. They want a separate Tamil state. They're prepared to slaughter Tamil civilians and moderates to achieve this. The JVP are the Janantha Jaffna Public something. V- Vim, okay, I'm not oh, going to no. pronounce all those. Yeah. They want to overthrow the capitalist state. They're the communists. And they're willing to murder the working class while they liberate them. The UNP are the United National Party, known as the Uncle Nephew Party, in power since the late 70s and embroiled in the, embroiled in the two above wars. And the STF is a special task force uh, on behalf of the government will abduct and torture anyone suspected of being or abetting the LTTE or JVP. But then there's the, also the IPKF, the Indian Peacekeeping Force, which are willing to burn villages to fulfill their mission. And then the United Nations have offices in Colombo. That's all it says. And then there's the RAW, and then there's the CIA, who were probably training torturers, and that's oh, just... Definitely training torturers. That's just some of the groups involved. And he says, oh, yeah, it's simple, but it's not that simple. This war only ended about 12 years ago or so. Maybe 2009 or so, 2010, I guess. Uh, 2009, I just looked it up. And with the Tamils being defeated, the Tamil Tigers being defeated. But this is a common, there's, there's a lot more books coming out about this. So maybe, uh, they, well, yeah, apparently we, we Sri Lanka, the government refuses to allow any sort of outside in, investigation or... Like examination of like exactly how many fucking people died, and they, you know, they're that's like, not suspicious. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because the accusation is like the Sri Lankan government itself, which was the one that was kind of uh, leading the Tamil. Now the the, the Sinhalese, the Sinhalese were the ones in power, and or majority of seats in the government, positions in government. They were leading the t- the discrimination and persecution of Tamils. And now they're like, eh, don't worry about that. <laughs> but it's the accusations in this book and any others, it seems to be that they were like fucking death squads and they were just disappearing people left and right and like horrible rape and torture and destruction for decades. And a, uh, uh, quote, another quote uh, about that specific thing. It's, it says something like, um, you know, the, oh yeah, the JVP killed less than 300 to crush us, the government killed more than 20,000. Maybe twice that. Oh, well, you know, we got to make a point. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. For 20 years. And this, and this wasn't even like a battle. This, this wasn't even like, um, you know, like soldiers shooting each other across a field or in a jungle. This is literally like kidnappings, you know, torture, beheadings, and literally just trying to punish people. And uh, apparently India was supplying weapons and training to the Tamils for the first part of the war and then came in on the side of Sri Lanka for the second part of the war because they were like the hegemon in the, that part of the world. So they couldn't just let it go. They're like Italy in World War One. They can't decide which side they're on. Well, it's hard to make it up your mind, you know, that when you're <laughs> <laughs> so many spicy meat to balls. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's the that's our fucking simpleton version of this very complicated conflict. That is the background of this whole book. And to repeat, M- Molly was fo- was a photographer taking pictures of the destruction, taking pictures of the battles, t- being in the in the heat of it at times. And he was accumulating pictures that were really damning of the leaders. And he had been hired by this group called Sunder because it has no vowels in it. And they, <laughs> Sander, hired him to, I wasn't really clear, like they, they would like he publish for these a p- lot of people. He and will. Over he the years, up. he accumulated these pictures. The last one he was working for was his center group, but he had already had most of the pictures already. Right, but he, you know, he was a hustler. Uh, but he, they were paying him to get these, get whatever pictures, and he's, he just had uh, the luck. Like he says at one point, he, he wasn't a particularly good photographer. He was good at being in the right place and capturing really powerful images or capturing people like meetings between leaders of different groups that shouldn't have been meeting together or, you know, like, and he's accumulating all these things. But then he's dead and he doesn't know why. And you're finding all this out all along the way of the story, of course. And he doesn't remember how he died or what happened at that time. 
but you do know that he's uh, he's like dismembered and in the back of a fucking van. Yeah. So so after he like does this whole thing at the the you know heavenly DMV, he sort of like gets sent back to Earth to and what he's but as a ghost like and he's really just a ghost for the rest of the book except for the flashbacks of course but when he's before he's dead but as a ghost the first thing he sees is the two dudes called the garbage men just chopping up his body and throwing it in a lake along with a bunch of other bodies too so his sees his body being dismembered and then the two guys called the garbage men are like yeah tough day yeah <laughs> Let's, let's go. Let's let's hit the road. Let's just go home. But this is like a common dumping spot for bodies. This river, or this lake, or whatever it is. And he also meets. Um, so he meets his like case manager, <laughs> of who is a woman who had been killed in the conflict, and he had actually taken a picture. You no, know, she had used a. I think he took a picture of her. She used one of his pictures somehow. And she then she used a killed picture her, of her. A, a she used a picture of his in one of her um, papers and or in one of her books and didn't give him credit. And he's all pissy about it. And she's fucking dead, so she's like, get over it, dude. And <laughs> she's she's the one who's like, here's what you got to do. You got to go get your ears checked and go to the light or something. I forget what the steps were, but he has to do a certain number of things. He's like, listen, you just do what I say. I don't really give a fuck. I'm a union worker. <laughs> she's just, whatever. I get paid the same whether you do it or not. You have to and get your he- ears checked, get your deaths counted, get your sins coded, and your moon registered. Right. Which... You know, and fill out form twenty three B. Busy day in triplicate, and uh, bring you two pieces <laughs> Get it of notarized. IT. And then he also meets uh, Senna, the ghost, uh, the ghost terrorist, yeah, who the ghost is terrorist. who uh, I can't keep track of which side he was on. He was yeah. A, there are there's a was lot he a of JVP weird P guy. I don't really. Remember. He was a JVP or a JTT. There are a lot of things that happen, and I am because part of it was like him thinking about flashbacks, and part of it was him as a ghost observing things. And I tried to follow it, but I'm not sure I followed all of it. It's very hard. But Senna (laughs) is a ghost that somehow can still like whisper to people or somehow affect the regular world a little bit. And so he's basically achieved poltergeist level influence. Yeah. <laughs> Must be the hormones. <laughs> I literally just edited the Exorcist episode and it's like, oh yeah, those teenagers sometimes they get, you know, <laughs> telekinesis. <laughs> They're hormones. It didn't say how old he was. <laughs> it's true. No, he, it does. There are a lot of uh, dead kids in this book. <laughs> there are. So anyway, he like uh so Molly is is not Molly, it's Mally. <laughs> M- a A Mal or M A A L I? Uh, someone did the audiobook. No, I did not. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm assuming it's Molly because it's short for Melinda. I, I listened know. to an interview with him and I feel like he was saying Molly, but that's, that's what I thought. Sure. But it's not so, M O L L Y. No, no, no. Like a goat. <laughs> <laughs> or like a Irish pet girl. Goat. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of wants to like both figure. First, he's just like, I want to figure out what happened to me. Because he like his memory is not quite working right, and he's wants to figure out what happened to him, and then he also wants to figure out like also because he has all these pictures, and and he has the negatives of all of these pictures that he thinks will change the world, will bring down governments, and sure he took some of them for like the AP and some for these other humanitarian organizations, and but only a few of them were ever published, and he has way more. And he has some that were, like, so brutal they, that, that the AP wouldn't even publish them. So for the rest of the book, I mean, the main plot of the rest of the book is first in ghost form, figuring out what happened, and then flashbacks to, oh, yeah, that's what happened, and then also trying to figure out how to whisper to his friends to, like, try and find the pictures and the negatives before they get confiscated and so that they can finally be published and that's what he wants to accomplish in his seven moons and so uh he starts out i didn't i'm not sure i can remember the order of all these things and so you go and meet his um his roommates jackie and Dee Dee, and you find out how he meets both both of them and jackie is a she works for the bbc she is literally like the bbc like announcer in sri lanka 
and who, you know, lived in London, you know, went to school in London, but now lives in, grew up in Sri Lanka, I think, but lives in London, but lived in London and now is back. Typical BBC, she has the right accent, so she has to have the, the London accent. Yeah. Even in Sri Lanka. <laughs> and her name is Jacqueline, so she clearly grew up somewhere else. Or has much more, like... Though the shortened version is Jackie, they did spell it uh, not the normal way that we would. <laughs> but it probably has parents that are more associated with the upper the class or whatever, more educated, yes. you know, connection to the good old days of colonialism. <laughs> so that's where they, you know, are in a different... They're not living in the villages where they have, you know, undocumented to children and nobody reads. Mm. And uh, Jackie is a girl that he met literally when he was at a casino. And he's at the casino a lot. He's a... He's, he's, a, he's a degenerate gambler. <laughs> he's a gambler. And he meets her and he's, he starts to say like, hey, you're doing that wrong. Or you're betting on this wrong. And she's like, what? And she's totally into him. But he is not into her. He's into moons, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> He is gay, and so the other part of the book is him talking about penises. Being, <laughs> penis. He does talk about penises. He's just talking about he, and he also is the horniest man who ever lived. So he <laughs> just fucks everything he can. And at one point, someone said he fucks everything that moves and some things that don't, because <laughs> he he's just constantly banging dudes. Though he does mention. When something it's like, oh, the same thing happened like when I have sex with girls, I cried. Uh, so he's he's banging dudes and serially cheating on his boyfriend and finding loopholes. Like I didn't have and sex loopholes. with anyone because yeah, exactly. <laughs> because he blew me. That's not sex. Doesn't count. <laughs> he said because his boyfriend asked, "Do you do what?" You know, like, were you faithful oh, yeah. to me? Do, and he do, said, do you do this I don't do anything that we do together with anyone else. Like, by that I mean I didn't think about our future after we had sex. <laughs> and what you could call this kind of uh, bullshitting grammatical fiction. I mean, I could have used this anywhere for the book, but I'm thirsty. This is called Grammatical Fiction from Root and Branch, and it is an India Pale Ale. And on the bar, it's like, the can doesn't tell you much. Dry Hop with Citra, Comet, and Simcoe. And then there's a whole fucking thing from some philosopher that I'm not going to read. That is nice. It has a uh, the New Englandy thing, but not quite so uh, sweet. A little more balanced out. So I don't feel like I'm getting I'm losing a toe from drinking this. <laughs> we should say though, you might not lose a toe, but you can gain our, another toe. <laughs> our support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. We could gain your support if you head over to Patreon.com/slash Drunk Guys Book Club, where you could uh, exchange probably not toes, but money. Uh, to get all sorts of shows are not yet. currently an option, but Patreon's working on it. Uh, but in the meantime, <laughs> you could get early access to episodes, exclusive content, vote in our monthly book poll, get shouted out, join us for our live episodes, and so much more. Can't even list it all here. We should actually announce that we are having oh, our yeah. next live episode. We are October twenty seventh. Yep. Thursday, October twenty seventh, eight p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you're a patron, you will. We will put a Zoom link on Patreon, and then you can join us while we record our while we talk about a book. This book is going to be what is it again? What book are we doing? Nosferatu, but with numbers. By Stephen and shit. Prince. Yeah, it looks like a Prince song title. N O two four. Well, it's Stephen Prince because it's Stephen King's son. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I, I thought you were going for Prince because it's like the letters number, like nothing compares to, no to you. That too. Probably uh, less, maybe, a maybe less sex than a Prince song. Who knows? Um, Who knows? It's a Stephen King's son. It might have a lot of sex in that book. It might have. I mean, it's, I just hope it has Jahoobies. I um, will have to have Jahoobies. Yes, congenital Jahoobies is uh, <laughs> my favorite literary trope. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll be doing that. If you are a patron, become a patron for a buck, you cheap bastard, and you could join us. <laughs> And it'll be fun. We will be merry. We will say stupid things and, you know, smart things about the book. And you could participate. And it's only for patrons. You don't have to have all of your toes. We won't check. Nate might check. <laughs> Jimmy's, no, Jimmy, Jimmy might Jimmy check. Jimmy will, Jimmy will I don't check. Jimmy I don't check. likes checking. I don't want to check, but I will I if like I have to. to. Know. <laughs> but he checks in the dark with his mouth. <laughs> Uh, that's the only mm. way you can be sure. Those could be illusion toes. <laughs> illusion toes. Ghost toes. 
So Molly, you meet you meet so you meet Jackie, and then you meet his uh, who who all and Dee Dee, who he lives with. Sure, his Jackie's initials cousin. for a longer name. That although you would Dylan. think what what his name is Dylan. Yeah, Dylan Dimmin, Dar- Dylan Dram Dar- 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 or something like that. Something Duran like Duran. Who's Dar- uncle Dar- father? His father is in the cabinet or something. His father is Stanley. Is Jackie is his position? cousin, so Jackie is Stanley is Jackie's uncle. It got confusing, but after a while, I figured it out. And Jackie really likes Molly, but he does not like her. So he's with Dee Dee, even though he like pretends that he's not gay, or at least they keep it like, a secret from her. Yeah, they, they keep it. A, they kind of they try and they sort of keep it a secret, but they're also like, we can't do this. It's still kind of thing. I mean, Molly is not at, at all uh, inhibited in in any way, but. Dee Dee is, though you would think because Dee Dee is a lawyer, you yeah. would think he would notice when Molly said, "Oh yeah, I didn't do anything we do." <laughs> but he works for he like, like a, non, a nonprofit. You know, he's a different kind. Yeah. Of, he's not like a trial lawyer trying to catch people. He's doing paperwork, doing filing for grants. Law. And the bigger clue would have been like, no. I mean, the, the biggest clue for Jackie is to say is that he constantly referred to him as Dee Dee's nuts, and <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, why do you keep calling him that? It's like I don't know, nothing. <laughs> We shouldn't be telling people. Who, and then it was very... <laughs> I don't know how the, the clues were there the whole time. The calls were coming from inside the house. So the dad of oh, D... Yeah, the cha- I was just flipping through. The chapter called Eggplants. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't li- like a nice aubergine? <laughs> he literally has a chapter called Eggplants. Anyway, so um, you meet... You sort of like... you, you in Both in flashbacks and in like the ghost observing them. You meet his two roommates, but then also he goes to the crow man who is this weird guy that can speak to ghosts, but he, he, he does this like, it's almost like he's holding a seance and he's like, Oh yes, your uncle is here. I can hear him. Except his uncle is really a ghost and really is there. This is one of many times in the book where it's really similar to the movie ghost. He's the there's a Goldberg lot of similarities character. to Ghost, yeah, yeah. They do mention Patrick Swayze in the book. Yeah, there's <laughs> definitely is. there's definitely a heavy Ghost as set during the Gay Sri Lankan War. <laughs> I mean, that was the un, unfortunately unfilmed sequel to Ghost, where Patrick Swayze comes back as a Gay Sri Lankan who <laughs> has to communicate through Whoopi Goldberg. It was deemed <laughs> insensitive for very good reasons. <laughs> They're like. You got kept blown up. the accent. It was just not working. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Ditto? No, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it is similar. Like, there's a book. It's a mo- it's a book about a guy who's trying to communicate with his lost loved ones and trying to solve his own murder. And, and then there's, there's spooky also, mean there's ghost that will ghost eat your ghost. To, is there a good ghost and ghost? I can't remember. No, there's bad. Uh, well, like, there's one ghost that like teaches him how to do something. Oh, it was like teaches him how to move shit. Yeah, but then there's like the other mean guy, get off my train, hobo ghost. Yeah. And, and then the guy that killed him uh, gets eaten by bad ghosts at the end of the movie. Yeah. Well, they, they, push him into, uh, they push him into the glass, and then he gets eaten. His soul is eaten by bad ghosts. Much like Which in is, this book, where yeah. there's bad ghosts trying to kill the bad guys, and then there's also evil ghost demons who are trying to eat the bad ghosts, or ghosts that didn't go into the light. Which is one thing, you know, he's, got a, he's running around trying to solve his own murder, and help his friends uncover the truth about the Sri Lankan war. And at the same time, he's got to dodge demons that are trying to eat him and subsume him into their weird ghost bodies. And all he's trying to do is escape. <laughs> this is escape. It's a pina colada inspired milkshake, double India pale. Oh, yes. <laughs> and he does love getting caught in the rain. Oh, man. Wait, who makes that? Torch and Crown. Oh, it tastes man. like a pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, this is a uh, pina colada beer, yeah. How much, how strong is this? Eight, eight point five percent That's not terrible. It does taste like 90% pina colada, 10% beer. I, I can handle that uh, proportion. That's, that's about right. I mean, it's odd because pina coladas are not usually bubbly. No, they're like, so, but they're thick. They're like a milkshake. Yeah, well, yeah. This one's a little thick. It's a milkshake IPA. Mm, girthy. It sounds like a nice it is girthy, girthy thing in their mouth. Which is, you know, a lot of the talk in this book. <laughs> See the chapter in eggplants. Uh, yeah. 
It's about agriculture. <laughs> so, because you have, because you have to grow them. <laughs> they're not big at the beginning. They do grow. <laughs> if you and then use there's properly, seed. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone gets plowed. <laughs> So he goes to see the crow man to do, and where there's like a seance going on, and he's like, and and then the ghost, uh, Senna the ghost, brings him there and says, this man can talk to people, and then uh, Mally because says, you need Senna to... Senna the ghost has his own motivations as well. Yes. That are not clear at this point, but the he, he wants to is like, that being guy's terrorist. full of shit. Don't listen to him. He's a bullshit yeah, he's like, artist. You know, going to the light is bullshit. We're here. We can still win the war. We have our ghost powers now. We can, you know, ghost Captain Planet and work together. And so he wants to, he wants to <laughs> he kill the people who killed them because they were killed by the same death squad, allegedly. So he's like, now we can exact revenge in ghost form. And he's like, oh, it'll be spooky. <laughs> it would be very spooky. And so Mali tells the Crow Man, like. Tell, like, somebody needs to send a message to Jackie to look under the bed. Look, look, look find in my the box. box. <laughs> <laughs> look in the box under the bed. And so the crow man sends a, like, one of his little helper, little homeless boys over to Jackie and says, you must come meet tomorrow morning. And so they do. And then he's in the, uh, uh, Mally is there. And the crow man is like, your friend, Mally is here with me in the room, but it actually says some like real things. Like check, he says, check under the bed in the box under the bed, and so he does. And under and and Jackie's like, oh my god, this is amazing. And he brings the like red bandana, which he used to like identify himself as a Journalist. not combatant in one of the like war zones he was in years before, and that's why he has it. And this is like his offering to the ghosts or something like that and so jackie then does go back home looks under his bed and finds was it the nothing. envelope no it was he finds nothing at first because he moved it but what she does act, end up find is just a, a dress book yeah that was it's an address book and some of the names in the address book have symbols next to them and the symbols are a, an ace Eggplants. a king a king a queen <laughs> A happy, a, an eggplant and a big happy face. <laughs> eggplant and a, and a measurement. <laughs> They're playing cards. There's a ten, a king. That's ten and with, a an, queen. with a with a inches sign next to it. <laughs> That's for a special guy. And so, what he really wants is so the neg- So he's got a bunch of photographs there that have never been published, but that are of brutal, total brutality. During there the are the Lankan perpetrators of a particular massacre they keep referencing that I'm sure is a real thing, but I don't know anything about. From 1983. Yeah, some big, well-known massacre. <laughs> it happened. And, like, he got a... pictures of the guys running it, and it's a guy who's currently a you know government minister. He's the big shot. Yeah. In 1989, when this is taking place, mm. or 1990. And so the next part of the book is someone from the government comes and like they like oh no so jackie and molly's mother go to the police and they're like he's missing we don't know what's happened to him he always he always like calls or he always like tells us where he's gonna be after he's gone and this time he hasn't checked in at all and the police are like oh another dis uh, disappeared person this is like the kidnapping you know, capital of the world. And so they're like, oh, another one of those? We really, we can't handle this. And, but they're like, oh, we'll pay you to investigate it. And they're like, oh, okay, yes, we'll take it. And then in a um, memorable line, the little p- policeman says, you know, the, the, the policeman asks the captain, okay, are we here to investigate it or are we here to cover it up? Yeah. There are a lot of really just good lines in this book. Yeah. So I would have been highlighting constantly if every good phrase. You know, just uh, and looking for this line to, uh, that you were looking for. I found this other one I highlighted early on when they're talking about their theory. Someone's exchange here talking about their theories of, of war. And uh, a guy says, uh, how come Americans and Jews and Muslims are always waging war? It's the rage in their subconscious from losing their foreskins as infants. And I <laughs> highlighted that. But mainly because the question... How Americans, Jews, and, and Muslims are always fighting, but Hindus—they never have any beef. 
<laughs> You're welcome. Tell that. <laughs> put that on a popsicle stick. That's. <laughs> I'll be good now. So they're running around trying to find the pictures. Meanwhile, in Ghostland, his caseworker keeps following him, trying to get him to get through with his like next steps of the afterlife before he goes into the light. And also, Senna is trying to get him to uh, become a ghost terrorist and blow up people with uh, bombs and crash their cars with ghost tactics. And also, a bear is trying to eat him. A ghost bear. Because that didn't make any sense. A fart. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then um, when they find the pictures, um, they go and like Dee Dee's father comes in there and he tries to grandstand and be like, this is He's like this. a government guy also. He's like a bureaucrat and he's a pompous dickhead. And he's, you know, he's Cambridge educated, so he you know, thinks he's better than everybody. And he has power and wealth and, you know, whatever. And he just is in f- flagrant denial of his son being gay. <laughs> just like, nope, it's fine. Everything's great. We are doing everything right. You know, he's one of those types. And uh, then he somehow, like, calls his boss in, who is one of the guys that... Who is the guy. But, like, that... Um, fucking molly has pictures of him in his car watching these things and i was just googling it it's like it was a real thing in july of 83 over the course of like three uh, a week or so where at least 300 people were murdered and eighteen thousand buildings or establishments were destroyed but some estimates put the number of dead at much 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 higher i would say if eighteen thousand buildings were destroyed 300 staggeringly low (laughs) Yeah, because there are stories where they're like, a group stopped a bus full of Tamils, block, blocked the door, and then lit it on fire and wouldn't let anyone out until they were all, you know, made sure they were all dead. You know, it was fucking horrific. Uh, but this guy, there's pictures of him in his car, like, watching it. <laughs> like, ah, oh, interesting. Making no effort to, not necessarily participating directly, but that he was the, he was implied that he was, he was, he was behind it in some way, or he was encouraging it in some way. Involved. But, but he comes with his goons, and they take the pictures. And then begins this, like, fucking complicated plot thing of, like, trying to get those pictures back between Jackie well, and they, Dee Dee. They, they take the pictures, but he's like, I still have the negatives, and no one knows I have the negatives still. So he's got to find He being the Molly. Yeah, but Molly. He, has to, he, do, he doesn't know where he put them, right? He, doesn't, he has to remember where they are still. Or he has to somehow yeah, like, communicate he, he that. Has, he them. has ghost amnesia. I mean, that's, that's believable. <laughs> Yeah, he still doesn't remember how he died. He's still forgetting a lot of his life, and he's going back and remembering things until he remembers how he dies. It's like a whole book of like, like he has like a bunch of strings on his finger. He's like, "What the fuck did this mean again?" So um, ghost and memento. <laughs> yes, ghost mento. Ghost, ghost mento. Yeah, <laughs> um, the spookiest treat. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 boo maker. And what was fucking mento's thing? Is <laughs> the fresh maker? The fresh maker. Yeah. So that guy takes the pictures, and then we get involved. Elsa from fucking Frozen, who comes in as uh, <laughs> she's the Molly's you know, boss at Cinder, who's like, those pictures belong to us. And there's this whole shit of them trying to like outmaneuver each other to get this box of pictures that kind of went on a little too long for me <laughs> in the book. I kind of lost a little interest at this point, but there were a lot of characters. So why did the the person she's working with, she referred to as her brother cousin? Because um, gotta keep the, they, the were blood clearly, pure. <laughs> they were clearly banging, but um, I think it was like a, you know, woman traveling by herself without any family kind of thing. I was trying to figure out how could somebody be your brother and your cousin at the same time? How are you brother cousin with I think that, that Alabama. Must be like a, <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be like a cultural thing. I, I don't know. It must mean something like if your family. mom bangs her brother, then yes, that yeah, because he's your uncle. That's a that's a brother cousin. Yep, yeah, <laughs> literally. That's how. That's, that's how, how you get a brother grandpa. cousin. Mm, brother cousin. Figured it out. Great. <laughs> Mystery solved. There we go. All right. Well, so join us next week. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that had to be like a a thing that exists in another language that doesn't translate directly or if you translate directly it means brother cousin you're like i don't know what the fuck that means but i don't know what it really means 
So what's happening in the book at this point? I well, know. this, so this is like they're trying to find the negative, and, all the and also shit. he's trying Backer to blow shit. up the bad guys, and Senna's flying around trying to make him, uh, trying to radicalize him, and showing him how cool it is to be a ghost. And they like, he's like, you know, you could they, whisper they, shit they to them. And at one point, bomb, yeah, <laughs> when they find all the bodies, including what is, uh, including Molly's corpse. And like the UN inspectors are there to like, we're going to identify these bodies. And one guy's like, fucking none of these people have dental records. Good luck. Senna's like, look at this. And he just keeps rubbing the asses of the people. And then they all have to scratch their ass. <laughs> it's one like <laughs> random passage here. He's like, look what I could do. <laughs> I mean, that's a great power. If I could make people have an itchy <laughs> asshole, that I would be entertaining run at the least world. for a little while. <laughs> right? <laughs> you run the world. <laughs> Then they actually do identify Molly by its dental records because he took a picture of his own x-rays once for an art project he never finished. And they're like, oh, look, he got a picture of his dental records. That's the exact kind of stupid thing a art major would do. Yeah. This is my display. This is me. Revealed. <laughs> they have pictures of x-rays <laughs> of themselves. <laughs> I got as close to the subject as you can. <laughs> the inside. Yeah. I mean, the, the pictures where he put a camera lens in his ass didn't really work. Because <laughs> the flashbulb wouldn't get in there, too. You know, it was weird. So they identify him. And also, the, throughout this, the other character is um, Molly's mother. And we get their backstory about how the father, like, abandoned the family. And he was a shit. And Molly, and, like, no one seemed to understand anything about Molly. Like, and his like, father he... moved to the United States to Missouri. And like had another wife and another in a well, couple of children. Well, he grew up in children. misery, so Missouri wasn't <laughs> that far off. But then he got he got sick and was in the hospital, and he literally called Molly on the phone, and Molly yelled at him, and he literally had a heart attack on that phone call and died, <laughs> like literally. So Molly killed him by yelling at him. I imagine that is the dream of many unaccepted, closeted gay men and their fathers. <laughs> like, <laughs> it fucking killed him. Or just anyone with but, a shitty dad. Well, yeah, but like, he, especially, like, there's a part right around that time that gets revealed. The mom tells about how Molly had tried to kill himself. He's like, oh, he's a fucking pain in the ass. Such a drama queen. And <laughs> he just did it to, to torture me because the father left and I was the one left. And he's like, you fucking idiot. It's because I realized I was gay <laughs> and I it was fucking not the good place or time to be gay in the world. So oh, definitely not. No. Though he seems to be having a ball, literally. He's having a lot of, <laughs> he's got a lot of balls. But he is banging constantly. By the sack, he's just... <laughs> he is running a one-man train across Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> he is the Passage North. He's the train from the last book we did. So, okay, a bunch of other stuff happens. And he manages to get... So the so Elsa managed to get manages to get some of the pictures and manages to get out of the country. Literally, she sneaks out of the country on a bus with Germans taking a risk there uh, to, with Germans there uh, <laughs> and and manages to like get out. And so then the king, who you find out is isn't it that the, the major Mr. general, Cyril? The major fucking... major yes, what's his name? Oh, um, a long um, name that U- I'm going to major. Be. Ungoya? Raja. Ooh, it was something with a U, yeah. I didn't highlight his name anywhere. So, oh, okay, so he <laughs> finds out who the king is, and then the, the, the king is this guy, is the guy who worked for, he works for the, the government, right? Yeah, he's yeah, a major he's a, in, he's the, a, in, the, in the, the military. Army, the government, yeah. and he, and so Molly ended up taking a lot of pictures of all these massacres, either for him or of him. And so he wants to, and he's like a pretty high up dude in the like, you know, intelligence service. Well, he also, service. he works for the defense minister guy who is part of all the massacres. So, yeah. you know, they're the, they're the government. And he's, his job is to like protect him, like politically. Yeah. Uh, and so he was the king and, and he was the king, the, in the, the playing card, the king. And so he like, uh, he goes, he, he learns how to do dream walking. From the good caseworker. Oh, that's right. It's like, go, you can go into their dreams, you don't do that whisper ship. That whisper ship is like, you know, black magic for the bad ghost. But we got, you know, you can do good stuff too, like hanging out in dreams. So he goes into her dream and says, check out the worst two albums in my collection. <laughs> the worst two albums are the follow up to Chicago's debut album and the <laughs> Hot Ice or something from Queen. Is that the shitty one? Or what was the one like after Freddie Mercury was dead? <laughs> I don't know. He said he's, he's, he, it's hot something. Well, Freddie Mercury, Mercury wasn't dead yet. 
No, he keeps mentioning how much he likes uh, Freddie Mercury. I wonder why. Mustache. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. And then she, like, in the dream is like, oh, check these two records. So she does. And then all the negatives that he's been hiding all this time, uh, that's where they've been hiding. Because, and I never had a camera that had film in it. So, but a pair, but this is you the were more 80s. into those those ones that we had to have a little explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Hold still for forty six minutes. <laughs> it's like half Canon. Oh, maybe that's why Canon is a picture company. Oh, it's the explosions. Mm-hmm. So anyway, he says <laughs> everyone thought I had thirty two. Uh, you know, thirty two. My rolls of film were thirty two pictures, but actually, I used thirty six, so I could keep. Four, I could clip out four negatives from every roll and no one would ever know. So he did. So he kept a lot of the most important pictures to himself, just the negatives of them, of the most brutal stuff. And so he hid them in the two worst albums he owned. The two worst albums, but he also sent a copy to his half-sister in Missouri. He sent a, he sent some to his sister in Missouri and he sent a batch to the guy who developed his photos yeah he like there's a note in it that says that that they find that says oh and you know return to molly almeida but if you can't find him bring to varun varun something like that who was the guy who was the like expert at photography the developing expert that they bring some to and so they bring him to him and he's like, oh, yes, these are all really important. So they develop all of the negatives of the most, like, brutal pictures. And then they're going to put on, the, and then they, they're going to put on an exhibition. And they're going to make a, you know, photography exhibition for him in, in, in Colombo. Uh, and all the people are going to come. But at the same time, Mally, as a ghost, it, like, he tells Jackie this, and then she, like, gets it going, and they're going to, like, do all the things. He had the exhibition, but then now Molly is, oh, yes, Jackie gets kidnapped. Because um, the, the Senna the ghost takes him to the torture palace to see all the torturing being done. He says, we've got to kill these people because they're bad. And then he sees Jackie is in there. He's like, oh, fuck, that's not good. I'm a ghost. What can I do? And Senna's like... <sighs> We oh, ghost shit. I don't like this. <laughs> and so they go to like the head demon ghost who's like, I can teach you to do stuff and we can kill all these bad guys and save her if you agree to like hang out with me forever. Instead of going to the light, you become one of my soul army. And he's like, I don't know what any of that means. Sure. Yeah, I believe it's a Parliament want. Funkadelic album, though. <laughs> yeah. Soul army is definitely soul it's army. Be. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, his caseworker is like, hey, don't do that. But Molly decides to do it because he's like, I want to save her. You know, like she does, you know, she's my friend. She did all this stuff for me. Um, and she's trying to, in her crime is, you know, getting all these pictures, all, all the pictures developed and so shown to everyone, which is what I wanted. So he's like, yes, what, whatever it takes, whatever, it, whatever I need to do. And so he goes through this thing, which means he like gives himself up gives himself up to the monster, the Mahali. Mahakali, yeah. Which is this weird, which is like weird monster thing. And it's like, oh, but now that you've done this, now you can whisper three things. Now you can whisper to three people. And so he uses that to uh, basically get her out. He whispers to the the police, the the, the, the guard at her cell basically saying like you need to rescue her she hasn't done anything wrong she's she's a nice person you're a nice person she's a nice person she doesn't need to die yeah uh and so less shitty one he rescues her by by like basically pretending that she's just another prisoner that she's he's transporting and it's like no don't take your hood off if you see us so then we'll have to kill you because you know that's well, he, what happens. He kidnappings. also whispers. He also whispers to her uncle, Dee Dee's dad, Stan, that they've taken her, and he's like, "What the fuck? You know, I'm important. They should be taking my family." And he tells the cop, "Like, this girl is this guy's niece, and you know, if you help her out, you know, you'll be helping him out, and he's important, and that'll get you uh, get you that transfer you always wanted back to you know, parking instead of genocide cover up." <laughs> A cushier gig. Yeah. This is when people want to just be a meter maid. 
And so he does that, and then she gets out, and she's rescued. And then, but then there's the other thing with the the with, what's the driver Molly? What's the driver? The, dri- the, the the earlier in the book, the the ghosts had worked together to swarm a van that was carrying three of the people in the death squad that killed them. And they crash into a bus stop and kill a bunch of people. They killed two of the guys, but the third guy, the driver, they just called him Driver Molly, he lives. They save him so that they can, like, whisper to him and make him go crazy and put a suicide vest on him so that he can take the suicide vest to go to the, you know, secret police headquarters and blow all the bad guys up. So that's where they send everybody. And the ghosts all go, and they're all gathered around to watch these guys blow up. And this is my favorite part because it's a con Partly because the defense minister, the evil minister guy, has his own ghost who's like hopped on him like a backpack who just is like helping him and like helping do evil. And the part of the ghost con is involving having another ghost do a sexy dance to distract him. (laughs) How else would you get him distracted? Yeah, you got to do a sexy ghost dance while another guy whispers to another dude to blow himself up. It's a foolproof plan. It's like Ocean's Eleven, but with ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 11 inches because eggplants. Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> Molly like helps with this. But then when driver Molly is there with the suicide vest, uh, Molly says to him, he's like, he's got one more whisper left. He can whisper to one more person. And he says, no, don't do it. These guys are assholes, but everyone else in the building, they're probably just regular people. Do they deserve the di- to die? And the driver is like, um, yeah, I don't know. Not sure, but then he does it. So then he like de- detonates his um, suicide vest and kills everyone, except for the one minister dude who because manages to The sexy to dance die. didn't work. Because he, he heard Molly do the whisper. He's like, hey, what the fuck? I fell for the sexy ghost dance con again. And then he, uh, he grabs the defense minister and throws him into a bathtub, which happens to be nearby, I guess. Because, you know, foolproof uh, bomb defense bathtub. As you always. know all those bathtubs inside of yeah. office buildings? <laughs> yeah, you know. He has a bathroom nearby for pooping. Um, and, and taking luxurious baths. Yes. And so they kill, he kills a whole bunch of innocent people. He kills Stanley who's there. He kills a bunch of everybody else except the defense minister. And then the, uh, the Macaulay is like, Oh, you dick, you fucked up my plan. I was going to love all these people. And she, she grabs him. And then the backpack evil demon monkey ghost punches her right in the dick or something. And he's like, uh, now we're even Z's. And then Molly flies away. Cause ghosts fly on the air currents like blimps in this. Or if you just say, if they hear their name said somewhere, that it's like a just zooms yeah, right over there. You can like be summoned by people talking about you, or you can travel around on the wind. But you could only go any place where your body has been. Yes. Right? Wasn't there some sort of limit? Somewhere you've been in your life or where your corpse was. It's limited. Part of, then they explain, do they explain if, if, if part does have to be all of your corpse? Because he gets dismembered. He could have covered a lot of territory. He does get dismembered, yeah. but all his parts end up in the same place. They'll get thrown in the lake. <laughs> And then quickly um, defleshed. Did you notice that? Like they find it like two days later, and they're like, "Just, just bones." Like that's that's not how that works usually. I got the sense the lake was very polluted, but with with like piranhas, like <laughs> radioactive what, radioactive piranha. Yeah, yeah. Like this, you know, it's hard to. I've been watching that Jeffrey Dahmer thing. It's hard to get all the meat off of a bone. <laughs> so Molly then he uh, flies away. Flies away, escapes. He gets away, and then. And then, and then Dr. Rainey, or whatever her name is, is like, just Dr. jump Ronnie. into the water. D- jump, jump into the water. That's how you can get away. And so he does. And then, he, and then this is like his final moon. And, and uh, Dr. Rainey, Ronnie, Dr. Ron, Dr. <laughs> Ronnie is like, uh, okay, so you, it's their final day before the light before you have to make it you have to you have to make a decision now like the 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 monster can't get you here but you need to make a decision and so lays out all of these drinks in front of him and i wish i'd highlighted this part there's five different teas basically the like, tea, what if i drink coffee she shut the fuck up this is the <laughs> tea <laughs> is if you wish to forget everything the portello is if you wish to remember the Iraq is if you'd like to forgive the world this I recommend. The Thumbi 
Tom, Tom Beely, I don't know what that is, is if you'd like to be forgiven. The Cola Kenda is if you'd like to go where you most belong. And he's like, can I just drink, uh, take a sip of everything? She's going to try. Damn it. We've thought of that one. That guy you exploded. can't wish for more wishes. <laughs> we only fell for Classic. that once. <laughs> so he, he drinks, drinks the something. cola, and he ends up where he most belongs, which is working at the DMV. Yeah. <laughs> the oh. ghost DMV. Yeah. And because working at the he DMV. does get to help people. But working at the, his, the, his the exhibition ghost real DMV, is taken there are down. no breaks. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no break. And it says yeah. the, the, the instructions he gets are just four words. It says... One at a time, <laughs> so, yeah. which I think is the DMV's motto too. Actually, and follow the script. And he just also he learns it. that uh, animals have souls throughout this, and they keep being mean about it. It's like, of course we have souls. You're such a fucking racist. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I never thought about it. I guess. Though he does say at one point, do animals get punished and come back as people? <laughs> like, are shitty animals people now because we're so terrible? Well, that's how the book ends. Is he meets a a leopard who wants to become a human. Because humans invented electricity. And he's like, I've got some good ideas, but I can't do anything because I'm a leopard. I'd like to be a human instead. <laughs> Are you sure? There's a lot of shitty things about it. He's like, no, I want to have thumbs. Yeah, he but says, like, <laughs> uh, the, the leopard says that there are animals that are way smarter than humans. They just haven't invented light bulbs yet. Yeah. And he also says, like, I want to be a human. Like, humans, uh, like, I don't understand why all humans do is destroy, even though they can create. It's like, oh, yeah, ooh, dark. And so he eventually... He, he goes back to again, and he chooses the cola again. So it ends up where he's going to belong next time. And that's the That's end. right. So he goes with the leopard, and the leopard gets the, gets the choice, just like he did. But then he decides to also drink one of them again, and he drinks the cola to go back where he belongs, and then the end. So you don't know where it is that he ended up the second time when he took the drink that... It puts him back where he belongs. Did it put him back as a human again in Sri Lanka? Or did it bring him back to just back to the DMV? Or what did happen? You don't did know. He break the cycle of, of, of samsara. He's the manager at a footlocker in Albuquerque. He comes back. <laughs> it's, it's where, where they he needed needs you most. to be. <laughs> they need help. Their storeroom is a total fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and the end. That's a fucking wild ride. Yes. It was like 14 different plot lines at times. So what do you guys think? I actually loved it. I thought this was easily the best of the short list. Easily. I agree. I wouldn't say easily the best. Cause I, of the short cause list. I thought it was I thought it was good. And I think maybe it is the best of the short list. But maybe that's just because I didn't like the others. And this was the final one. So I'm like, really wanted to like it? I wasn't sure. But I did like it, but it, it was uh, hard to follow. It was very hard to follow. I mean, partly because I don't know jack shit about the Sri Lanka Civil War, and there was a lot of that that I feel like even just having a cursory knowledge would help. And also because there was, you know, three, you know, 20 different... Oh, we didn't even talk about who killed him. It turns out that Stanley, his boyfriend's dad, killed him for making his kid gay. It had nothing to do with the war, which you kind of expect. Like, of course, it's going to be some, like, personal thing. Oh, and another thing that happens is that they display all the photos and nothing take, happens. Yeah, like people come down. and like take them. They're like, oh, these are mine. I'm taking them, you know, and, and so they like kind of take them down. But in the very beginning of the book, Mally says, these, bo- these pictures will take down governments. And that definitely doesn't happen. It's like, what did he really do with his life then? Well, if he took all these risks to like take these pictures of this, of, of these horrible things that happened... What impact did it have? Ultimately, nothing. Even some of the ghosts, the encounters, like the caseworker person is like, you fucking just took a picture of, like, people getting killed. Like, you didn't really help. You just, you didn't do anything really that helpful. Like, you thought you were doing something important, but you, you didn't. Also, just, you know, through the whole thing, he's, he's a selfish prick. Yeah. And he thought, like, oh, I can make it all worth it. usually thinking change. selfishly about his prick. Yeah, and other people's pricks. Um. But in the end, his, his, what he thinks is going to help did nothing at all. And so that's why where he ends up is at the DMV actually helping. Yeah, like where, where do they actually need me then? Because I, because his plans were shitty. <laughs> and and then maybe that's all of us, right? Like we all think we're doing the right things. Like, no, you're not. I think he was just justifying it to himself. He 
didn't give a shit. Well, no, because he was taking money from anybody, basically, to take pictures. Yeah. He just happened to be there. And he was preparing his dossiers on multiple sources. It's not like he had a clear side in the conflict where he was like, these are the aggressors or these are the people that are wrong. It's just He was holding all those pictures basically for like an insurance policy or maybe even like a blackmail. She's into those. <laughs> uh, he, he probably is, yeah. It does talk about Dee Dee's ebony skin at one point. <laughs> I think of the six books on the list, I think, I, like, I fucking, I really think Treacle Walker's going to win. Oh, God. Shows that there's no fucking God. <laughs> but I think this would be the one I would pick, honestly, of the six. I think this was the best of the six. I still think Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies was easily the best overall. Like, there's not even a close second. Yeah. So this would be this would be second, but not close. If I was a Booker judge, I would give it to that one myself. Uh, maps, I mean. But and this one was this one was good, and I did think that because a different book about the Sri Lankan Civil War made the shortlist last year, that this They're is due. a thing that the Booker judges are into the Sri Lankan Civil War. Except it's not the same people; it's a totally no. different group of people. So it's really and more it's a of very a very different book. Yeah, definitely a very different book. And I, I think this one hits all the marks, right? We laid out our like rubric for the Booker winners. This is very creative. First of the book is in second person, which is weird, but it's like talking to his ghost. <laughs> so it's a weird grammatical thing. It's experimental. So it's right at the end where it's like when he died, he separated from his body, he became I and you. And I was like, sure, I guess. You can justify whatever you want, man. Whatever. Well, it's like the eye was his soul, or whatever, and the body was The eye was his body, I guess. Whatever it was. Oh, yeah. His body has eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I I think it hits the marks. It's about something political, fairly recent, that seems to be getting more attention now. Not that I followed the Sri Lanka Civil War. It's creative. It is entertaining. It is well written. It is it is very good. So I think this hits enough of them. I think it kind of rounds out all the things there. It just better be Treacle Walker. Fucking bullshit. That book was I I I sent you guys the, the clip of uh, the people interviewing him, asking him answering it, questions. I don't want to hear that man talk about that at all. So someone asked him like, "Is said is this person in purgatory?" Like, how the fuck did you get that question even from Treacle I mean, Walker? You have to, you just, at some point, you just have to guess because it doesn't make any fucking sense. But it's like, is this is the character in Purgatory is your guess? Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the character breathed in a lot of paint fumes. I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> I'm in hell because I had to read it. Maybe the author breathed in a lot of paint fumes. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Maybe this, this, maybe the whole thing of Treacle, Treacle Walker is from the perspective of a fetus whose mother is eating nothing but asbestos. Like, I <laughs> fucking know. Now. That's just as plausible. The Whatever fuck it that is, book. what's his name? Like Alan something Walker? Uh, not Garner. Walker. That's, <laughs> What is Alan it? Garner? Alan Garner. Garner. Alan Garner. Maybe Alan Garner's body is just mostly black mold at this point. And he's <laughs> it's tripping. like Mexican Gothic. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> a mold guy. <laughs> he's just tripping balls. If that, if that were the truth, I would allow... You know what? Fuck it, yeah. A uh, self-aware fungus wrote this book. I mean, Great. The book, it, it deserves it. He's okay. a you know fun guy. A, a plus, yeah. <laughs> Yes. If a sentient fungus wrote it, I would say, yes, that is worthy of an award because it's pretty good. It's like when an AI tries to write a, a thing and you're like, that's almost a sentence. Yeah. Oh, it can. Oh, the AI can write sentences. Right. Talked about it. They're movies, grammatically script, correct. It was terrible. That doesn't mean they make any sense at all, <laughs> but they can, they can write sentences. I forgot when we talked about the, the policeman's beard is half constructed. <laughs> the, oh, yeah. the, the poetry by the AI from like 1982. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that policeman's beard is half constructed. <laughs> so I think I would vote for this. Um, and I wouldn't mind if this won. It's like, Nate, you seem to suggest that you it's the least bad, not your favorite. Yeah, I want to say, now that I've actually read all six, before the Booker is announced, Booker Prize is announced, this is the first time I've ever done that, that uh, of the six, I would say this one is the best. Although... Oh, William is a very nice book. It's just a regular book. Yeah. It's it not a, a experimental book. <laughs> weird book, which is what usually gets the booker. And so there's a, there's a chance that one could win too. Or that would be like, okay, if that one won. It's just not weird, which is normally 
not a good thing, you know. Like normally, I'm not I'm not rooting for weird exactly. It's too pedestrian. But for the Booker Prize, you know, Booker Prize usually tends to be weird. And as you said, what is it? Lincoln and the Bardo in Sri Lanka. Yeah. That is Lincoln like and largely... the Sri Lanka. Tamils and the Bardo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got very strong Lincoln and the Bardo vibes. The Bardo this. is a Buddhist belief. And But it was in the Buddhists that like the were Buddhist, among the, the militants. Buddhist, yeah. And they were the ones that were like, murder and rape those people in the streets. They were, they like, were the majority, yeah. They're fucking crazy. Um, the Tamils weren't Buddhist? Tamils are Hindu. Oh, okay. The Tamils are the minority population in Sri Lanka, but they have their own chunk of southern India where Madras is. That whole state is called Tamil Nadu. That's where the Tamils come from. Oh, okay. And it's next to the island, you know, relatively. Yeah. So there's a bunch of Tamils on Sri Lanka, but the local majority population... It was, was, it was keep saying in the book is like, uh, Molly's like, are you Tamil or are you Senegalese? Are you a burger? It's like, no, I'm a sandwich. Nobody's like, uh, I'm a Sri Lankan. <laughs> the Hindus because, don't eat to beef. them. There's like, there's no such thing as a Sri Lankan. You are one of these people. And he's like, I'm both. Cause he was like a mixed from his ancestors, from his parents. Yeah. So he's he's a Genesis yeah anyway. So I was, I, what I was saying is I guess I would pick this one, but I didn't like love any of them. Like this one was good. But I didn't love it so much that I'm like, this one definitely has to win. I, I it wasn't like that. I think. What if you had just read it as a book we just did that was not a shortlist for the Booker, and it didn't have that like gravitas to it? I'd say this is a weird but pretty good book. That is what I would say. Yeah, I feel the same way. Just because it won the Booker doesn't mean it's something that's necessarily going to be a classic. You know, no. it's going to because no. if you look back at the winners, like you're not going to recognize most of the names of them before the last few years because they were it's not popular the same thing as literary, the, you know, Pulitzer or Oprah's book club even. <laughs> even the Pulitzer. Look at a lot of the Pulitzer winners. A lot of them are like, who? What? I know one of them. Our episode on The Milkman gets very few downloads. And that was an amazing book. It got a lot of downloads around the time that that book came out mm-hmm. and was announced as a winner. And then people move on. Like the, the we'll people have to send cons- it to more uh, dairy-based listeners. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the damn lactose intolerant podcasters that have not been <laughs> downloading it. <laughs> no, but these you know these books have a, a short shelf life. Typically, you know, like the literary nerds read them. Literally, and uh, God damn you. And then they <laughs> and they move on. Like then it's all right. What's the new? What's this year's or this season's highbrow literature release? Yeah, and a handful of them kind of stick around and become bigger and become important works, you know, in some way. But the vast majority of award-winning things in any genre aren't like it's classics like because not every year does an amazing groundbreaking thing come out, and you often can't tell what is an amazing groundbreaking thing when it comes out. It often takes a long time for it to be assessed and reassessed and and revisited. And Molly loved to assess things. He did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Like if you look at the like, if you look at the list of all winners for the Booker, like I recognize a couple of names from the seventies. Like that's a book that won the Booker. That's all I know about it. Like does anyone still talk about Holiday by Stanley Middleton? Like who? That's Stanley that Middleton. It sounds Latifah? like a mm, <laughs> yes. It's the uh, that was not uh, the film adaptation was bringing down the house or something. She did Last Holiday with LL Cool J. <laughs> God, that sounds. Impressive, uh, to say the least. <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of these books, never heard of them, never, never, you know. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like an amazing book in its own right. It's just the best book that got suggested to this list that year, you know. And that's, I don't think it's a knock against any of the winners. Like it beat mm-hmm. out a lot of other books. It was a good book that year. But I think of should the win. seven that we've read would have given it to the one that didn't make the list. It was really just the one, right? Yeah. We, we still haven't read the our, our our guesses were really fucking good. We nailed them. We guessed based on part. I don't want to read the long ones. <laughs> well, we, we, to, we we interpreted the betting odds correctly this year. <laughs> so who should read it? I guess literary book nerds and Sri Lankans. If you've like never stuff, learned, if you've never learned anything about the Sri Lankan Civil War, but don't start really here. Wanted to <laughs> that would this would be okay. I guess it's it is although a little it hard ends, to follow. Although the book ends in 1989, so and then a lot more happens after that. They still had most of the war, and the, yeah, the whole generation of fucking disappeared people. Well, before we disappear, tell us what you thought. 
Send us an email to drunkeyesbookclub at gmail.com. Or follow us on Twitter at drunkeyesbc. Or go to Facebook and Instagram at Drunk Eyes Book Club. And if you've listened this long, why not head over to Patreon.com and give us some that sweet, sweet rupees that you have. Or uh, leave us a review wherever you're listening. Five stars, one for every moon, minus two. <laughs> and you can also join us on Goodreads, and there might be ghosts. <laughs> You'll have a scary good time. <laughs> and check out the Hopped Up Network, a network Ooh, of independent reads. beer podcasters. And thanks for listening. <laughs>